In this video, I'll be explaining the irrecoverable debt or the bad debt, which means the customer does not pay to you or does not want to pay to you of how you should account for it. So we are looking up from the trade receivables point of view of how much value that should be reduced. And in our ACCA syllabus, only the direct write-off method is required. So for example, uh, the customer owes us, let's say, $1,000 because we uh, develop, deliver the goods worth of $1,000 to a customer. The customer has yet paid, has not paid yet. Um, and suddenly the customer say to me, OK, I'm going to go bust. And that's why I'm not going to pay for you a, a, a $1,000 worth of goods. If this is the case, then it becomes my irrecoverable debt or I can call it as the bad debt. So the accounting journals for that, first of all, under the direct write-off method, I should write off the $1,000. I'll use another color. I would provide for $1,000 of the irrecoverable debt expense to reduce my profit down. At the same time, I will reduce my receivables for $1,000. And that's how we do it. But subsequently, so for example, next year, the customer has not uh, gone bust. The customer decides to pay us, let's say, $800. So if I receive the money from a customer, all we could do, which means subsequently paid, I would debit bank worth of $800 to increase the amount of cash that I could receive. But how about for a credit side? Because originally, we reduced the full receivables worth $1,000 already. And now when I receive cash from a customer, and of course, there will be nothing to do with the receivables anymore because I've turned that receivable into cash already. And that's why under a direct write-off method, all we could do is to reverse the above debit entry, which is the expenses account. And now we are reducing the bad debt expense or the irrecoverable debt expense by $800. This method, quite easy indeed, because it does not really require a provision mix quite similar to what you've seen in the trade receivables aged analysis. And if you want to see a real example for this, you should check out my uh, check out my article. I provided you with the permission a provision mix in my article in much more detail. And the direct write-off method is quite straightforward indeed. But the downside of the direct write-off method would be the bad debt may incur in the year one, and subsequently in the year two, I receive the payment from a customer, and that means. The reduction in the irrecoverable debt expense does not really match with the first year transaction. And that's why it causes a bit problems here. Because it does not be in line with the approvals or the matching concept here. And that's why quite a lot of businesses in the real world we use the second method, which is the allowance method. But please do remember that the examiner does not really require you about the allowance method in the ACCA exam. But let's have a go through it. Now, the step one, what businesses should do, is according to the prudence concept, to perform the aged analysis on these trade receivables and to determine how much money that the business may not receive at some point in the future. And for example, if the business can conclude, I may not receive $146. So first of all, because it is called the allowance method, also known as the allowance for doubtful debt, is just to be the contract account to the trade receivables account. So what we could do is to create the first allowance by debiting the expense of the allowance for doubtful debt 
for 146 and to increase the allowance for doubtful debt for 146 and this is my first step because we're creating a pool which means the allowance for doubtful debt already in the step two if I receive a message from my customer and my customer decides not to pay $100 what we could do is to charge that irrecoverable debt directly against that pool that pool is called the allowance worth 146 because in this case the customer does not pay us for $100 so what we could do is to, we're going to reduce that allowance from the 146 by performing the reverse entry by debiting to reduce the allowance for $100 of the bad debt and to credit to reduce the receivables of $100 because we are not going to receive the $100 told by the customer but subsequently when the customer economic uh, position improves customer subsequently paid for $100 to my business so all we could do is we're going to reverse the bad debt which means I've debited the allowance for $100 before but now I should credit the allowance I should reverse the effect of $100 for that if I receive the $100 subsequently from, from the customer and finally when I turn that into cash I debit bank worth $100 and to reduce the receivables worth $100 there as you can see under this method you provide for the irrecoverable debt expense in the first instance but subsequently you're not going to provide for any uh, changes or reversal of that irrecoverable debt expenses anymore in subsequent period so that means this method is in line with the Approvals or the matching concept in the conceptual framework. Because as you can see, we are only reversing the pool, which means the allowance for doubtful debt, and that's all we could do. I hope you enjoyed this video about the uh, the direct write-off and allowance method, and in my uh, article I will also explain according to the IFAS 9 financial instrument the expected credit loss model related to the trade receivables uh, impairment at the same time of how uh, provision mix should be made in practice and of course if you're interested in studying ACCA courses with me please check my website and I look forward to seeing you in my calls. Bye. APC Accounting for your future.